Thanks. Minister, back a few years ago, I recall there were quite a number of, of members of the Permanent Defence Forces who had to, to cease membership when, after 20 years' service. They were still very young people, both men and women. Is that 20-year fixed term, that's gone now, is it? Because those people were disappointed to be leaving and they were, as Deputy Barrett said, that a lot of knowledge, a lot of experience, a lot of skill, and they were a loss to the, to the Defence Forces. Is, it's a fairly blunt instrument, you know, 20 years, person joined at 17, 18, whatever age, they were still young, fit people. Is, is, is there a different um, retention measurement now in regard to age or length of service? Similar, similar to the answer that I gave to it, within the White Paper project, there's a gap analysis um, project, and I'm, that's one, pro, one project within the White Paper that I'm bringing forward. Uh, to look at where uh, we have gaps within uh, the organisation and uh, that we can then look at the criteria for the expen extending the service beyond, the 12, uh, beyond what their retirement age, age, age is. Um, and the examination of retirement ages for enlisted personnel uh, has, has been, has been prioritised also. So this is, this is an area, because of the challenges that we are uh, facing on retention at the moment, um, and like you know, recruiting, the, the annual recruiting is not going to get us out of the, the, the problems that we have. So we have to look at the other areas. And this is once a Jerry that you will refer to, and what Deputy Barrett has, has referred to. Deputy Barrett. You know, it strikes me in this day and age where people are healthy and living longer and active and fit, especially army personnel, that it's a great loss. Not alone in terms of having to recruit people to replace them, but experience, you can't buy it. And, you know, 20 years is a very short time. Somebody goes in at 18, and they're gone at 38. Mm -hmm. The best part of their working life is uh, still in front of them. Now, I'm not saying that, you know, they should stay until 65 or anything like it. I mean, we have to be practical about this, but I think in this day and age where you, you need to keep people of experience and you know you train people and they do a great job and we're very proud of them but it's not that our troops are actively engaged in in sort of warfare or doing dangerous work you know by and large i say you know they do peacekeeping missions and do it exceptionally well very proud of them but um, it just strikes me that, like everything else, and I'm glad to hear that as part of your white paper, that you're reviewing all these things, because, you know, these things can trundle down, and maybe people are leaving, and you can't buy experience, you know, it's, it's something that you just can, cannot buy in any walk of life, but like to be losing and especially when the economy picks up and other opportunities arise, it puts a tremendous strain, I would suggest, maybe I'm wrong, uh, on the likes of the Defence Forces because there are plenty of options for people to leave and go and get other employment. I mean, they're very, very good personnel. You'd love to have them in, in any walk of life, but it's just that from the country's point of view and the point of view of our defence forces and the role that we play in peacekeeping, which to me is always a very important part and something I'm <coughs> very, very proud of, rightly so. You know, it just strikes that maybe we should be really seriously reconsidering, but I'm, I accept what you say. You're, you're, you're having a white paper and you're looking at this, but I'm glad to hear that that's the case. Yeah. Just, just to also, Deputy, we are <coughs> working with the representative organisations uh, on this issue, and this has been raised with me uh, through the rep organisations. Um, uh, it hasn't been the first time that it has been raised with me, but this is a, an issue that we will have to face, and uh, you're quite right in saying uh, that there are some people uh, that 
could stay on in the organisation. But at the same time, there are many opportunities uh, for personnel to progress right through the organisation and for promotions and everything like that. And they can have an opportunity to stay on well beyond uh, the, existing, the, the regular retirement age, if, if they were to say just a regular soldier. So there are opportunities there, and promotions are continuing. They're over 700 last year, this year so far, um, or 600 this year so far. So. But there are opportunities there, but definitely it is an issue. Uh, the gap analysis uh, on, on, on the white paper project and it's something that we are seriously considering. Thanks, I very strongly share Deputy Barrett's view in regard to experience. You know, as a society nowadays, just not in Ireland but throughout the world, I think we don't value experience Absolutely. and corporate knowledge. Unless people are putting stuff up on Facebook and tweets and all this type of social media stuff that's... that's um, governing too many people's lives today, there's not the respect or the appreciation for experience and skills and knowledge that's built up over years by person through their profession or whatever trade they pursue. And I'm sure there are plenty of people leaving, through natural retirement, that leaving jobs with massive, with uh, very important corporate knowledge. Knowledge that's not on, that's not on a file. You know, and I'm not saying that people omitted to put Put, take, leave notes and that and files. I'm not suggesting that. But knowledge that's built up through interaction at meetings and through participation in, in, in work, we, we don't value that to the extent that we should as a society. And I think it's, I don't know how, how you would counteract that trend, but it, I think we should be cognizant of it, of the value of the corporate knowledge and the skills and the experiences. Deputy Barrett said again, Minister. Yeah. No, you're right in saying that definitely and specifically a German, specifically people going overseas that has that corporate knowledge and that really take that with them to show the younger generation or the younger personnel that are within the, the, the organisation uh, to show them they're up. But that's, that's the same with every organisation that people say it's the older people have the corporate knowledge of the organisation. It's very important that they're able to hand that down uh, to the next generation. Yes. Um, Minister, could it, um, thank you for your presentation today. And of course, we all agree with ensuring that there's adequate funding put in place to meet the requirements of, yes. of the people who have served our country well. I, I think this would be the last engagement that we'll have you, with you, Minister, in 2018 to thank you and your officials for your cooperation and engagement with us over the course of, of 2018. And it, it, could I ask you, through your offices, if you would extend to the permanent defence force members and the members of the reserve defence forces our appreciation as a committee of the work they do on our behalf both on our island and in missions overseas as well i'd very much appreciate if that could message could be could be sent to the, to the, all the serving members through through their their ranks to assure them of our full support for the work and our appreciation of the work they do so well on behalf of all of us and to do, to do such good work in, in promoting the interests of our country abroad in their different peace-keeping um, missions as well. Thank you, Minister. Uh, thank you. Yeah, Could I just say, yes, uh, I'd like Barrett. to join with what you... I mean, it, one of the nicest experiences I had in my 37 years in public life was the short term I spent as Minister for Defence, because it's a unique, a unique position to hold. And very rewarding. Uh, and, but you're dealing with people who are all the time very committed to what they're doing. You don't, you know, you get, like everything else in life, you get the odd bad apple. But as a force, they are tremendous. And they represent this country so well, both here and abroad. And you couldn't buy the good publicity that this country gets from the missions that they partake, partake in. And uh, I'd like to think that maybe you could send back, as the chairman has said, our good wishes and thanks to all members of the Defence Forces for the work that they continue to do. Thank you very much. Thanks, Deputy Barrett. Uh, that concludes consideration of the supplementary estimate for vote 35. In accordance with Standing Order 90, a message to that effect would be sent to the Clerk of the Dáil. We will now suspend until 12.30. Is that agreed? Agreed. We have another select committee meeting at 12.30. Thank you.